Welcome back guys. Today I'll be doing a Cape Unit 1 question 1 from 2019. Here are the topics being displayed. The first question we have the quadratic expression f of x is equal to ax squared plus 12x plus b is divisible by x minus 3 and has a remainder of negative 27 when divided by x plus 6. We need to find the value of a and b, which are 3 and negative 63. Now, the word divisible means that when I divide, I will get a remainder 0, or when I substitute, I will be getting the remainder 0. Also, when I divide by x plus 6, I will be getting a remainder of negative 27, or if I substitute negative 6, I will get negative 27. This is the information we'll be using. So let's start with the part that says divisible. Now, the function that is given is f of x equal ax squared plus 12x plus b. That is what we'll be using to find out what is a and b. The part that states divisible by x minus 3, that means that when I divide by x minus 3, I will get the remainder 0. Now, we can get remainder by substituting into the polynomial first, if we get x minus 3 to be equal to 0, then we are going to solve. So we carry the minus 3 over the equal sign. So I will have x equal positive 3. Now substituting 3 into the function means that when I substitute it, I will get 0. And this 0 signify the remainder. So substituting it into the function, I will get 0. 0. That's what it's saying. Now, let me go ahead and substitute it into the function. So where I have x, I replace it with 3. So I have 3 squared here, plus 12, times 3, plus the letter b. And when I know what is a and b, calculating this, I will get 0. Now, let's simplify. 3 squared is 9, so I will rewrite this as 9a. 12 times 3, that's 36, plus b equal 0. Now, I will be carrying the 36 over the equal sign, so it will become negative. So I will have 9a plus b equal negative 36. Now I will call this equation 1. Now I'm going to have my, I am going to have my equation 2 using the information that I have here. So when I divide by x plus 6, I will get the remainder of negative 27. So that means solving for x. I will have x plus 6 is equal to 0. Then I carry the 6 over the equal sign. So x is equal to negative 6. Now, I'll be substituting minus 6 into the function. So when I substitute minus 6, it is saying that I will get the value of negative 27, which represents my remainder. So substituting it, where I have x, a, open bracket, negative 6 squared, plus 12, open bracket, negative 6, plus b, is equal to negative 27. Now to simplify, negative 6 squared, that's 36. So I will have 36a 
12 times negative 6, that's negative 72, plus b equal negative 27. Now I will carry the negative 72 over the equal sign, so that will become positive. So what I have here is 36a plus b equal minus 27 plus 72. Now minus 27 plus 72, that will give us 45. Here we have two equations that we will solve simultaneously. We are going to solve this using elimination method. So this is where it's coming from. Since the b's are the same coefficient, so I can just subtract equation 2 from equation 1. So having my subtraction sign and going ahead to subtract 9a minus 36a, that gives me negative 27a. B minus B, that's zero. You could put a dot. I'm just going to write plus zero. And then we have minus 36 minus 45. That will give us negative 81. Now this is negative 27A equal negative 81. So solving, I divide both sides by negative 27. So now I can know what is A, which is to show that it is when you divide you're going to get positive 3 now I can go ahead and find B using any one of the equations I will be using equation 1 so I will have A to be 3 now I'm finding B so I have 9A plus B equal negative 36 so using equation 1 to find out what is the value of B and please remember you can use equation 2 so replacing a with 3 so I have 9 times 3 plus b equal negative 36 9 3 is 27 so I have 27 plus b equal negative 36 now to make b the subject I will carry the 27 over the equal sign so what I have here is b is equal to negative 36 minus 27. So b is equal to negative 63. And here you go. We have shown that the values of the constants a and b are 3 and negative 63. And that's it. Now we're going to determine the factors of f. We have two ways to do that. But first, let me go ahead and replace what is a and b that we found in part one. So the function that was given is ax squared plus 12x plus b. We know that a is 3 and b is negative 63. So I'm going to go ahead and replace a. a is 3, so I have 3x squared plus 12x and b is negative 63, so I'll have minus 63. Now to factorize this, because we need the factor, so we have to factorize, multiply 3 times negative 63 coefficient of x squared times c that will give us negative 189 and we need two numbers that add to give us 12 the two numbers have to be able to multiply to give me negative 189 and add to give me 12 at the same time so the two numbers are positive 21 and negative Nine. So I will substitute the center over the two factors. So replacing 12x, I will have 21x minus 9x. So rewriting this, I will have 3x squared. Instead of 12x, I will have positive 21x minus 9x minus 63. 
Now I'm going to group. So grouping the first two, then the next two. Now I look at what is common. We factor out 3x. And what is remaining? Divide this by 3x. So I'm left with x. And divide 21x by 3x. So I'm left with positive 7. Then I factor out negative 9. So negative 9 being factor out. So I'm left with x. And divide negative 6 to 3 by negative 9, I will get positive 7. So the factors are 3x minus 9 and x plus 7. And these are the factors. Now we have another way that we can do this. So what we're going to do, we're going to factor out the 3. So the coefficient of x squared, I'm going to factor it out because all numbers, the coefficient of x squared, coefficient of x, and the constant are all divisible by 3. So it's okay for me to factor out the 3, so I'm left with x squared, 3 to 12 goes 4 times, so that's 4x minus 21, because 3 into 63 goes 21 times. So it makes easier to factorize. So we need two numbers that multiply to give me negative 21, but add to give me positive 4. So it will be 7 and negative 3, 7 times negative 3, that gives you negative 21. And 7 plus negative 3, that gives me 4. So I replace the center with the two numbers. So I have 7x minus 3x in the center. Then I'm going to create my brackets. So what can I factor out of the first bracket? I can factor out an x. So I am left with, now I'm going to create the bracket. So in the first bracket, when I factor out an x, I'm left with x plus 7. While the next bracket, I factor out negative 3. And I will also have x plus 7 in the second bracket. So that means I will have x minus 3 and x plus 7 multiplied by 3 on the outside. Now this is the same as the previous one because you multiply 3 by what is in the first bracket and we'll have the same thing. So the 3 times x would give me 3x and 3 times 3 that's 9. This is just another way to rewrite the factors. Now the next question, we're going to solve for the real values of x, the inequality modulus of 3x minus 4 is less than or equal to 6. Now when we have a modulus symbol, we need to remove it and we can remove it by rewriting it as 3x minus 4 is lesser than or equal to positive 6, but also greater than or equal to negative 6. Now the next step. I'm going to get rid of the negative 4 by carrying it over the inequality. So it will become a plus. So I will have minus 6 plus 4 on my left. I'm going to rewrite the remaining part, which is the center. And then I will have 6 plus 4 on my right. Minus 6 plus 4, that's negative 2. Then I have 3x. And over the right, I will have 6 plus 4, that's 10. Now I divide both sides by 3, and we are dividing all of this by 3. It, this cancels, so I have x is greater than or equal to negative 2 over 3, but lesser than or equal to 10 over 3. And that's it. The next question, a binary operation is defined on the set of rational numbers by a assert b equal a b over 2, we need to prove that it is commutative. Now, in order to show that it's commutative, we have to show that a star b is equal to b star a. That's what commutative be. That no matter if I change the order, I will get the same. Now, for a asterisk b, I know it's a b over 2. Now, I'll be doing b asterisk a so i will be changing the order so where i have a i will be replacing it with letter b and where i have b i will be replacing it with letter a and then it's over two now b a is the same as a b because two times four is eight and four times two is eight 
So these are the same thing. So if you realize I'm getting the same thing. So I have proved that it is commutative because A asterisk B is the same as B asterisk A. That's it. For the final question, we need to use mathematical induction to prove that 5n minus 1 is divisible by 4 for n is an element of natural numbers. Now natural numbers, we start from 1. So it's telling me that n starts from 1 going on to infinity. Now in order to prove, I need to prove that for any values, this will get a number that is divisible by 4. So first I'm going to let pn be this statement. And the statement is 5n minus 1 is divisible by 4. For we know n is an element of natural number, and you can write that also. So that's our statement that I'm writing here. And remember, we are proving that for any value, it is divisible. So it doesn't matter. As long as it's a natural number, when I substitute it, replacing n with that number, it has to be divisible. Well, not necessarily has. We're proving it, so therefore we're proving that it's going to be divisible. Now, it is divisible by 4, for n is an element of natural number, so that's our statement. So first I'm going to prove when n is equal to 1. What happens when n is equal to 1? So for when n is equal to 1, I need to substitute into the 5 to the power n minus 1. So replacing n to be 1, my result should be divisible by 4. Now 5 to the 1 is 5 minus 1, so that will give me 4. So 4 is divisible by 4, so therefore I've proven it that it is divisible when n is equal to 1. Now, reality is we could go on and on substituting different values of n, but let us make an assumption. Now, I'm going to assume that it's true for when n equal k. k represents any natural number. So it means when I use any natural number, it will be true. So I could use 5, 10, 15, 100, 2000. Those are considered to be natural number. So when I substitute that value, it will be divisible by 4. So let pk be the statement where k is greater than or equal to 1. And that's very important because natural numbers are 1 or greater. So k has to be greater than or equal to 1. So I am going to replace n to be k because k represents a natural number. So any natural number, I'm saying it's true. So if it is true, then it means my result should be divisible by 4. So I am going to rewrite this as 4m, where m represents... An any number that when I substitute that number it is divisible by 4 any number now I'm going to carry the minus 1 over the equal sign so it becomes positive 4 so I will have 5 to the k equal 4m plus 1 I am going to use this piece of information soon now going to now prove true for n equal k plus 1 k plus 1 means the next number after k. Because if I say it's true for when n equal k, then that means it will be true for when n is k plus 1. The next number has to be true then because I'm proving that if 1 is true, then the next one has to be true. It comes right after it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to prove that it's true. So replace n to be k plus 1 minus 1. So I replace the n. So I have k plus 1 minus 1. Now, I'm proving that it's divisible. Now, stick a pin. Let's just look at indices because I'm going to break apart 5 to the k plus 1. So if I have a to the n times a to the m, remember from indices, it is the same as a to the power n plus m. So if I go ahead and rewrite 5 to the k plus 1 as a product, look at it, there are similarities. I can rewrite this as 5 to the k times 5 to the 1. 
So if you realize it's 5 to the k times 5 to the 1. And if you look at it, indices, losses, and the bases are the same, you add the power. So that's how we get 5 to the k plus 1. We write the base once and add the power. So that means I can split my 5 to the k plus 1 as 5 to the k times 5 to the 1. And it's the same thing. It is minus 1. Now, 5 to the k, I'm going to replace with what I have in green. Remember from the assumption, it is the same thing as 4m plus 1. Good. And 5 to the 1 is 5. Do not subtract 1. 5 to the 1 is 5. Take away 1. Still do not subtract. Now, I'm going to clear the bracket. So, clearing the bracket. So, I have 5 times 4m, that's 20m. And 5 times 1, that's 5 minus 1. Now, 5 minus 1 is 4. So, I'll have 20m plus 4. Now, for here, this is saying that 5 to the k plus 1 minus 1 is equal to 20m plus 4. Now, I can factor out the number 4 and when I factor out 4 out of this I am left with within a bracket let me create the bracket 5m plus 1 now what this is saying is that whatever is m whatever value is m it doesn't matter when I replace m what's gonna happen is that it will be divisible by 4 because I have a 4 in front of it. So I have proven it because it doesn't matter what is m. So when n equal 1 and when n equal k and when n equal k plus 1, it is true. So we have to make a statement and ensure you make a statement in the end to show that you understand. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.